A single Earth day technically contains 86,400 seconds. And up until a few decades ago, this was always believed to be the case. But since then, our ability to measure time has improved so much that now it's no longer the case. The scientists had to propose a new concept, what's known as the leap second. A one second adjustment that happens once in a while when the Earth's rotation slows down by just enough to make the calculations of time on Earth no longer accurate enough. And all of this is actually because of the advancements in various measurements using distant objects like quasars, which are used for extremely accurate measurements of time, with a lot of modern satellites, including GPS satellites, directly relying on all of these calculations and all of these adjustments. With some of the most recent observations and calculations on the planet, discovering some other mysteries in the process. For some reason, the length of the day on the planet has been increasing, and at the moment nobody explained why this is happening. But let's discuss this in a little bit more detail. First of all, we know that the moon itself has always been slowing down the rotation of the planet. It's been doing this for billions of years. Originally, when the moon was just created, a single rotation on the planet was approximately 6 hours long. But because of the moon's pull on the planet, and obviously the Earth's pull on the moon, Earth's day changed from 6 hours down to 24 hours that it is today. And modern calculations suggest that the moon adds approximately 2.3 milliseconds every 100 years because of its gravitational influence on the planet. And so this is a pretty slow process that doesn't really affect much in terms of scientific calculations or measurement of time on the planet. Another process has way more influence something that began approximately 20,000 years ago. With the end of the last glaciation, or ice age, approximately 20,000 years ago, the Earth started to speed up. And that's because the ice caps that melted in the last few thousands of years reduced the overall surface pressure, which forced some of the mantle from within the planet to move toward the poles, essentially redistributing the weight and slightly increasing the rotation speed. And this shortens the day by approximately 0.6 milliseconds every 100 years. Things like earthquakes also influence the rotation as well. For example, the 2011 earthquake in Japan very likely sped up the rotation by about 1.8 microseconds. But more importantly, things like tidal variations and also various weather effects on the planet tend to redistribute the water, which then actually changes the rotation as well. With the variation here also being in milliseconds, but it can either speed up or slow down the rotation. Although some of these variations do have a very predictable period. In this case, there's a known period of at least 18.6 years. All this due to lunar tides. We've actually explored a similar concept in one of the previous videos that you can find in the description. And so in general, a lot of different weather patterns can actually affect the motion of the atmosphere on the planet, which then affects how fast the planet spins. And these atmospheric effects are even more dramatic on planets like Venus, where the atmosphere caused the planet to completely slow down. The rotation on Venus is in hundreds of days. And that's because the atmosphere here is much, much thicker. But on Earth, rainfall, snow, and a lot of other interaction on the surface will often affect the rotation of the planet. But as I've explained in the video about quasars that you can also find in the description below, today all of the time calculations involve the quasar map that you see right here. This is a super precise map of the location of several major quasars that's used in combination with various radio telescopes to precisely calculate the Earth's rotation and to then also precisely calculate time. And when used in combination with modern atomic clocks, it often allows us to also precisely calculate by how much the rotation of the planet changed. And turns out, June 29th of 2022 was so far the shortest day on record. Even though the opposite was happening in the last few years, the days were getting a little bit longer. And at the moment, nobody really knows why this happened. The most likely explanation is the sudden appearance of a lot of extreme weather effects in various locations on the planet. For example, here in South Korea, we've actually experienced the heaviest rain ever, with something like 14 centimeters of rain every hour for at least a few hours. You can actually Google rain in Seoul to see some of the craziest pictures ever. But other regions experience other types of weather patterns, and in a sense this could have influenced the rotation of the planet. This could also relate to the back-to-back -back La Nina events that happened in the last couple of years, which tend to have dramatic effects 
on the entire planet, and we've also discussed this in the previous video in the description or somewhere right there. Or it could be the melting snow caps, or even the Tonga eruption that occurred in January of 2022. In other words, at the moment, it's a bit of a mystery. As a matter of fact, weather here could be completely unrelated. Maybe it's something to do with the phenomenon known as Chandler Wobble, which is believed to have a period of 433 days and is related to slight deviations of the rotation compared to the solid crust on top. So at the moment it's currently unknown. But what is known is that it does have an effect on our daily lives. It might not seem like much, it's only milliseconds, but every few years for the past few decades, the scientists, because of these super accurate observations and calculations, had to introduce the idea of leap seconds with the first leap second being added on the January 1st of 1972. And here's actually a graph showing us an overall deviation of the day length compared to the standard that we expect, which is 86,400 seconds, with the last second being added right here on January 1st of 2017. But here's the thing though, and this is maybe something that most of you didn't realize. Because of modern technology and because of modern computers, this actually affects computers quite a lot. As a matter of fact, the addition of a leap second in 2012 ended up taking down several major websites, including Reddit, Gawker, and even Australian airline website Qantas. Whereas this article from 2017 explains why Cloudflare was also taken down by the leap second that happened in 2017. And because of this, several technology companies, including Facebook, have actually been advocating against introducing new leap seconds because they're afraid it's going to take down their websites as well. And actually not just websites, but entire networks that might be dependent on precise timekeeping that's not used to leap seconds. Although right now, pretty much most of the modern hardware and software is already used to having these leap seconds, so it technically should not be causing any problems. The problem is, we don't really know what's going to happen to the rotation of the planet in the next few years, and if it sort of continues the same trend, the scientists are actually thinking of introducing a negative leap second, basically a minus one second. If you look here, all of the leap seconds so far have been positive, and a negative leap second is going to create a major issue. Or it might, we don't actually know. Some computers might adjust to it pretty quickly, but some other ones, especially on older hardware, or the ones where some of the network administrators might not be ready for it, might actually end up creating a lot of chaos. And because so far the length of the day have actually been increasing and getting longer, for reasons unknown to us, despite the fact that we've just experienced the shortest day, it means that this negative leap second could become a reality after all, because as you can see from this graph, it's anyone's guess right now where the rotation of the planet goes. Because of the dramatic climatic changes and mixed with a lot of unpredictable events, it's quite possible that the days might get longer and longer, which might result in the introduction of that negative leap second. But interestingly, leap seconds were never really that disruptive. It really only became a problem in the last decade because of the advances in technology and our dependence on a lot of internet and network activities. And so next year, the ITU, International Telecommunication Union, might actually announce the cancellation of leap seconds once and for all, and potentially adopt something a little bit more dynamic, such as the idea proposed by Google known as the leap smear, a kind of a shorter adjustment that instead of introducing one second, introduces time change in much shorter increments. Which of course means that, because of the internet, we might actually have to completely change the way we measure time as well. Although I personally find it a little bit ironic that it's actually Google that possibly going to influence all of this. It really shows you how much power this company has over everything. I mean, technically, you're sort of watching this because of Google as well. And so at the moment, nobody really knows where all of this goes. We might be able to find an acceptable way to change time in the future, or we might experience a negative leap second, which might end up creating a lot of chaos and problems for a lot of companies relying on very, very accurate time. I mean, we already know that some of the stock markets have actually experienced crashes because of leap seconds, so I guess only time will tell how the scientists decide to resolve this. But for now, I guess the biggest mystery is, what exactly happened this year? Why did Earth experience the shortest day? We might find out in some of the future videos and some of the future studies, for now we can only guess. And once we learn something else about this, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, 
and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful personal t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.